I don't know exactly what they were expecting. I think many of them were also expecting to come back after a few years. Uh, a lot of them wanted to escape their poverty in Japan and were looking for better lives. Some were looking for an adventure. Um, I, I don't think anyone realized how far uh, Hawaii or even the US was. Um, so uh, I think most of them were pretty naive about what they were getting themselves into. Um, and then, so they arrived on, on these uh, port courts in uh, Hawaii. Uh, I think the, there's many stories of uh, how the photos were very different <laughs> from the actual person that they were meeting. So uh, many of them used different people's photos or photos of when they were much younger. So there's plenty of stories of you know, the brides being very disappointed with what they um, saw uh, when they met their their uh, groom, um, and so yeah, you see these photographs of um, women dressed as best as they could just for their their quick wedding that they had, um, and yeah, they look like the um, photographs that I saw from my grandparents. Photograph, photo albums, and it really looks like oh, they could have. I wonder if my my distant relatives knew any of these people. Um, they were mostly from rural areas, not from Tokyo, but like uh, Hiroshima, uh, Kyushu Islands, Okinawa. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, so most of them weren't wealthy by any means. But they were dressed really well for, for their photographs. But then you see later on the, the, the photos of them working in fields. And it just looks so miserable, uh, to be honest. Um, and you realize, like, wow, they, they must have had to go through a lot. Um, so that, that shock of seeing this almost glamorous wedding photo and then seeing them working in the fields. And then being able to kind of follow their story over time. So um, I was able to connect with a historian here in Hawaii who's now celebrating her 100th birthday, birthday this year. She's not a picture bride herself, but she, uh, she had the foresight of interviewing a lot of them in the 80s, 90s, um, when they were like 90s. Um, the, the, picture brides themselves, the original ones were, yeah, uh, in, getting up in the age. Um, and so she collected their stories and compiled it into this um, book called Picture Brides of Hawaii. Uh, it happened to come out right when I was starting this project. So, uh, so I used the book uh, a lot to kind of learn about this, this history and then wrote the piece. Um, of course, it's it, music has no representation. Um, so uh, when when I found out that uh, this this quartet would be coming to Hawaii to perform, uh, I contacted her. And she gave me permission to use some of her uh, photo collections, so we created this slideshow. Um, and. Yeah, we, we organized it in a way where you'd see them, the brides when they were in Japan and then their wedding photos and then them having starting a family, them working in the, in, in the fields, and then them at their um, growing old. So you see, you can kind of uh, track their, uh, how they transition uh, through their lives. So yeah, it made it all the more real realistic and yeah i would never uh, undertaken a project like this where it's you know, collaborating with a historian like this where the music is um adding this just a part of the, the experience i think um yeah reading the book the, the way because she's interviewing these folks from when they're 90 100 um they, the, the way they talk about their experiences so um, 
you, there's, you don't sense the pain or the suffering that they must have gone through. Uh, you could say, oh, this happened, and uh, that was that. Uh, they talk about it so matter of fact. Um, so you have to really read between the lines to, to figure out how they must have been feeling. And the music, uh, as manipulative as it might sound, it just uh, makes it feel a little bit um, more real. Uh, even though it's not like I'm, I'm taking a quote and I'm shaping that quote to a certain kind of music, but uh, I just try to have this clear music that I was both sad and melancholic and, and full of hope all at the same time. Um, and yeah, so. So I, I was surprised how much the music added to the experience. Um, I was looking at the photo, um, the, the slideshow. Yeah. Great. So how did you dis like? How did you uh, decide on the structure of the piece? Um, how do you decide how to use ukulele, which is uh, yeah, has a, has a interesting function in the piece, right? So. Yeah. So clearly, I guess um, because it's not a Japanese instrument by any means, uh, nor does it have any connection to like, that I could find to like early Japanese Americans. Um, but uh, it was a fretted instrument that like, I, I was pretty sure the, the, the quartet members could take on. Um, so I asked them if they could learn it. They said yes. Um, and then, yes, I guess I don't exactly know what I, I meant to, to represent for the ukulele to, to represent necessarily. I don't think it represents any one thing. Um, and just practically, I just wanted them to, the quartet to have this, uh, instrument that was representative of Hawaii um, because I, banjo and or mandolin didn't feel right, but I didn't want to just try to uh, plain old string quartet. Um, the historian that I talked to, Barbara, um, she said it remind, reminded her of Koto. Uh, so uh, I could see that, I, I certainly. Um, it's first time writing for the ukulele, so I, not the most elegant writing, but uh, I was trying to learn the instrument, learn how to play the instrument as, as I was composing it. Um, let's see. And then what was the other part of the question? Um, Sorry, that how do you structure the piece? As, as a yeah, whole? right. So the book that Barbara Kawakami wrote uh, went from one character to another. So one uh, picture bride, she would tell her story and then it would move, to, move on to another another uh, picture bride. So uh, each of her chapters would go through this, the same structure that, that my entire piece had. But I guess I compiled it all into the, the beginning uh, before in Japan, the migration, um, the, the wedding family, the current, or uh, then at their seeing with them with uh, like four generations of their their, their uh, descendants. So, so yeah, I guess I just structured it around how her chapters were structured. But just mm -hmm. compile, compile multiple families into one. Mm -hmm. Great. And and um, what do you think is is maybe the uh, the most hopeful parts in the story, or the most happy part in their story? Uh, I, mean, I think it's the end, and when you see. Their descendants uh, all in in the, in the same picture. And you see 
Um, and when, after I wrote the piece, um, several people came up to me to, to say like, oh, my, my great grandparents were picture brides or my grandparents were picture brides. Um, so their, their fingerprints on, on you know, the culture here is and the people here are everywhere. Um, a lot of them, I would say most of them are, are no longer entirely uh, Japanese blood. Um, I think the, just the nature of Hawaii, there's so many mixed races. So there are so many um, people um, now who have you know, like one sixteen of their of their blood being like, oh, my great grandparents were picture brides. So um, they might not even know all that much about it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, so it kind of, dawn on me the impact that these people had um, much more after I actually finished the piece. Mm -hmm. Great. 